I've always said that Soundcraft makes one of the absolutely best mixers in the world for somebody that's moving from an analog mixing console to a digital mixing console. This console, the SI Expression, is extremely easy to use because it runs like an analog console, but gives you all the benefits of a digital console. It's very straightforward. It's designed specifically for live, not live and recording, and or mostly recording and a little bit of a live. This is a live guy's board, and I'll show you why. First of all, the big feature here, the big selling point, the big operating point, the big benefit is moving faders. So all of these faders that I have set up here, when I make an adjustment on them and then I recall a scene, you can see how they all move. They all change. Now when I come back to that scene, those faders move again. I don't have to do level matching or look at some display and, and change the level. The, fa the flying faders or moving faders move. Now you've seen that on some other consoles, but because of the expense of flying and moving faders, typically you have to go through a lot of layers. Well, the breakthrough here is this is a 32-channel mixing console, and it has 30 moving faders. So you can operate up to 30 channels visible at one time. And then, of course, you can flip to another layer if you want, and you can pick up another uh, 16 channels, and so, uh, excuse me, 14 channels, so you can have up to 54 mic inputs active, and then the rest are your matrixes, your aux masters, and your returns. So let's take a look at this. Um, they also make a 16-channel version with layers and a 24-channel with layers at, at incredible price points. But the one I'm excited about is the 32-channel version right here. So first of all, you're going to take a look at this channel. This is channel 1 and this encoder. The encoder is typically your trim control, and the trim control is what lets in the amount of sound level that you're going to be able to work with. If you've got a hot mic, you turn it down. If you've got a mic that's not as hot or a source that's not as hot, you turn it up. And what you do is to determine what that uh, encoder does is there's a gain switch here, a filter switch, or a pan switch. So that encoder can be any of those. Most guys will just leave it right on gain. And then your on-off switch. What's really cool about this on-off switch is green is on, and this is then off. It's, it's just a, a blank. But then you go ahead and turn on, and it glows nice and bright, and it's a nice soft switch. The select switch, which is typical on a digital console, because you have to then select what channel you're working with, is right here. So I select channel 2, I select 3, 4, back to 1, and then a solo button. So I can solo that channel on a pair of headphones, listen to what's happening. So very analog right here. And you also have input level controls. So you have uh, a signal present control and then a six LED ladder control. And like I said, the nice 100 millimeter moving fader right here. Now, what happens when you want to adjust a channel? You simply select it, and this is where your EQ and your effects are. Okay? So you have 48 volt phantom power right there. Turn it on or off. You have the uh, polarity switch on or off. And then you have a uh, gain or trim here as well, either one. And you can see that when I move this one, this one changes as well. And then I have a high pass filter. I can turn that on or off. When I turn the high pass on, I can go from uh, 0 to 1K. Typically, I'll set a high pass at about 100 hertz for a vocal microphone. So I'm cutting out some of the rumble. Uh, if you've got an instrument microphone, you may just go ahead and shut that off. But you can turn it on or off, and you can adjust it right here. Again, this section is, is not encumbered by a lot of different switches and multiple on-offs and everything like that. It's very, very clean. Now I go to the gate, and so I can have a gate where, uh, since, for instance, I have a kick microphone that I do not want to have the sound from the stage leaking into it, other than when the kick is being struck, I can set a gate so that as soon as that signal exceeds the threshold, the gate opens up, lets the kick sound through, and then it closes down as soon as that kick sound is off. makes a very tight sound. Snares are particularly uh, uh, enhanced with a good gate. Piano, same kind of a thing. Compressor to control the dynamics. Again, I can turn it on or off. And I've got uh, everything I need here to see where I might set my threshold, uh, set my attack and release. Very, very easy to do. The EQ section is similarly straightforward. It's a four-band EQ with two mid-sweeps. So the top end, the height, uh, is just simply a shelf, and I've got, I can set the frequency of that shelf, and then the amount of boost or cut, just like you would on an analog board. The low frequency is the same way. 
It's a shelf control. I can set the frequency of that and the amount of boost or cut on the bottom end. The two mids have an additional control, and that's the Q, and they're sweepable mids. So I can control where on the frequency spectrum those EQs will sit, on the low, mid, high, or anywhere in between, and how wide, based upon the Q. I can have a narrow boost filter or a narrow cut filter, and I can sweep it back and forth. So I have encountered very few situations where I needed more than four bands of EQ and two mid sweeps, and this board covers that. Then you've got the out, you can put some delay on this channel if you want. So if you want to synchronize a microphone with the monitors, you just set a little bit of a delay on there. Uh, and the pan control, you can send it left or right or mono. Everything's right there, there's lots of room, it's very easy to see. Okay? So that's the channel input strip. And if you want to have channel uh, 10, you just select channel 10, channel 12, whatever. It'll all move and recall the settings for each channel and you can instantly grab them and change them. Very, very straightforward. When you want to uh, operate mixer, or excuse me, auxiliaries, your monitor sends for in-ears or wedges, that's extremely easy as well. I mean, it just couldn't be easier. Mix one, I simply press that button. Did you see the color change here? The color changes to indicate to you as the operator that you're now on a different setting for these. They aren't the inputs. They are the um, auxes. And so each one of these channels, channel one uh, through 30, this is the send for that aux. So say I want to run the drums into that aux, and I want a little bit of lead vocal and lead guitar. I just simply bring that up, and that's what I have on uh, mix one or aux one. Aux two, same thing. I can create a different mix here. These are my input channels, but the sends to the aux. So I go ahead and uh, adjust those. Say on this one, I want some piano. I want some backup vocal here. I just go ahead and set that. On mix three, same kind of a thing. I go ahead and adjust that mix the way I go. Now, see how the faders move? Most consoles, that doesn't happen, so you don't know where you're at. Now you have to rematch the faders. So when I go ahead and set to mix two, that changes. Remember, I had this mix where I brought in a little bit of vocal group and uh, a little bit of piano, and then mix three changes as well. So I can instantly see where I am just by pressing that. So it's called um, a uh, sense to fader. And so all of these are very easy to adjust. You've got 14 mix buses, buses to work with. I can also go to matrix, uh, and I have four matrices, and then I have effect sends as well. And the effect sends will turn blue, so that you know now I'm working with the effects sends. So the channel send to that effects bus I just bring up. In this case, I may just want to bring up one channel. I want a little bit of effects on lead vocal. Let's say I have lead vocal right there. I just go ahead and route that. That's on effects send, uh, one. And then I've got four lexicon effects engines in here that I can set my reverb, I can set delay, combination of reverb and delay, and away I go. So on my lead vocal, I'll have some reverb and delay, bring that back through the returns. And then I've got three more effects engines I can use for other inputs. Again, very, very easy. Each of those four effects engines has a tap switch. So I just tap. So if I'm using an echo type of the, uh, uh, an effect, I tap that to the beat of the music, that'll set that, and then when I bring that effect in, it'll match up with the beat of the music. So very, very straightforward, very easy, again, very convenient to work with. Here's the layer selection here. Remember I had layer one, uh, and I'll go ahead and um, um, switch it, and then I can go to two, I can go to C, and I can go to D. So I've got up to 54 mic inputs here. I've got my uh, sends on fader that I can do. Here's always the master. And then I also have uh, mute groups. So I can set up a mute group here. And uh, so the A, I do the setup and I can select the mute groups, put them on uh, mute group one and away I go. Um, the, um, let's see, let's clear that. And then uh, the mute groups are very easy to access. And mute groups are real handy as well because I can set up instantly. I may have a uh, backup uh, singers on one mute group. I have my back line on another mute group. I just go ahead and select that during the service and it mutes those channels. Over here you have your mono send and you have the left and right send or this can be a center channel send if you'd like. Okay. You also can record scenes, as you can do with virtually any digital mixer. So I can roll through scenes uh, and have all of my settings change. But again, with the moving faders, when they change, then I can see the change that's being made. 
The other thing I can do is store channels to libraries. So for instance, if I come up and I'm on worship team and you have a setting that works well for me, you have an EQ, a compression, and a gate for the microphone that I use, and then I'm off for uh, the next two months, you use somebody else. But now when I come back on, you just recall my channel library, bring my settings back, and away they come so that you don't have to reset everything or try and remember what you did last time to make my uh, voice sound the way that you want it to sound. So you just go ahead and recall that. Then, of course, you've got uh, uh, the uh, light that you would typically use that you'd find on any analog console. Some people say that the screen is a little small on here, but really that's kind of the idea. You're really only going to use this for patching. Uh, you're going to use this for effects. Uh, but it's a live person's type of a mixing console, so the real estate is here. Now you notice that we have an iPad here. There is an iPad application, so you can do your patching on the iPad. You can take this wirelessly remotely. You just go ahead and plug this into a router, a Wi-Fi router. You can walk anywhere around the building and adjust uh, anything on the console. You can adjust your uh, channels. You can adjust your sends. So if you want to mix monitors from the platform and get those set, uh, you can do that. The other thing, there is a uh, graphic EQ, so you go ahead and uh, select that and you will go ahead and get your graphic EQ, one-third graphic EQ. You can adjust that, assign it to monitors if you want to, assign it to the house, make all your adjustments off of the iPad. So that's going to be very, very handy um, and, it's, uh, and everybody loves to use an iPad to be able to move around the uh, sanctuary, move around the room to make the adjustments. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back panel because there's some exciting things going on there as well. Okay, here's the back panel of the SI Expression. As I mentioned, there are 32 mic input preamps. So you've got 1 through 16 here, and then you've got 17 through 32 here. So just like an analog console, you simply plug your microphones in here, and away you go. You can swap this out directly for an analog console. The light will show you if you've got 48 volt phantom power turned on for that particular channel. You have 16 outputs, of which two of them are your mix uh, out left and right, so you have 14 aux buses that you can use for in-ear, uh, on-stage monitors. Uh, and so that's a usually a plenty for most churches. You also have the ability to plug in cards. So you can use, a, and here's one here, this happens to be a fiber optic uh, card. But you can plug in an Aviom card, so you can run your Aviom monitors directly off of this console. Uh, in the future, there are going to be cards uh, for MADI, uh, for Firewire, other digital interfaces. Uh, that you'll be able to use, including, of course, the BSS uh, links, so you can communicate directly with your digital signal processing or the DBX uh, on-stage personal monitor system. Check it out at ccisolutions.com. Simply click the link down below and you'll always get the best available price.